bit of action here at Piedmont International University as tonight the Lady Bruins take on the Lady Warriors out of, out of Appalachian Bible College. Aaron Brunk with you tonight as we bring you all the action. The Bruins returning to the floor tonight looking to snap a three-game losing skid and pick up their third win of the season. Piedmont's last official contest was two weeks ago against at Bob Jones University, a 79 to 67 setback to drop the Bruins to two and five on the year. Although it's been a two week break, the Bruins have been active. A couple of scrimmages against D2 schools that they split over the last couple of weeks, as well as plenty of time in the gym to gear up for the final stretch of the regular season. The illness bug has bitten the Bruins over the last few weeks. They'll be without two players tonight, Sophie Barnes and Braden Carpenter, both out this evening, so just seven active players for this contest against Appalachian Bible College tonight. Speaking of the Lady Warriors, this is their first official game of the season, and not just that, this is their first game since restarting the program in five years. Speaking with Amy Stiles, head coach of Appalachian Bible before the game, she said they've had a few scrimmages, but right now her team lacks experience and confidence. They've got 11 players on the roster, only one of them, senior Sophie Taylor, has any college playing experience. Caleb Money's Bruin squad hoping they can take advantage of that inexperience and use their speed and athleticism to keep the Warriors off balance here tonight and pick up their third win of the season. Starting lineups for tonight's ball game, first for the Lady Warriors of Appalachian Bible College. Starting at the one guard, the only Warriors player with any college experience, as mentioned, senior guard Phoebe Taylor. She stands five out, five eight out of Morgantown. Pennsylvania. The other guards for Appalachian, junior Kiki Peterson and Abby Lieb, the 5'4 sophomore hailing from Annapolis, Maryland. On the interior of the four tonight for the Warriors, Allie Playstead, 5'9 freshman from Hammond Sport, New York. And the center for Appalachian is 5'11 sophomore Kayla Cruson out of Milford, Delaware. And for the Bruins, 2-5 and five on the year, led by first-year head coach Caleb Money. His starting five looks like this. Number one, Ashley Lane at the point. 5'7", sophomore out of Niceville, Florida. They go big after that. Alicia Cumberbatch coming off a non-pro performance gets the start. Moni, Monifa Angle also getting the start. Ariana Rumpf getting the start tonight. And the five will be Zaniah Kessler. We'll take a break for the prayer and the anthem. And we'll have starting action for you from the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live next. This program is unique in that it it addresses three key leadership areas, organizational management, educational administration, and ministry administration. I would say the payoff is in ways that I never imagined. I never thought I would have such a supportive network. I never thought I would meet such great people who were at different points in their life. I mean, you can be sitting next to someone who's the CEO, and you sit next to people who are doctors. You also have sit next to people who are stay-at-home moms who have decided to go back to school. It has enriched me in ways I just never thought I, I, a PhD program would. I have a nuclear engineering technology bachelor's degree. I got an MBA from a secular school, and I knew that there was a whole Christian aspect of leadership. You read the books about Nehemiah, David, uh, Christ himself. And so I wanted to build that into my learning and knowledge. So I started looking for a Christian college. Piedmont comes across my computer and they're on the top of all these lists. Best this, top that, top 25, top. And I said, okay, this school seems to have a reputation for academic excellence. The professors, the relationships we're building and the leadership program is second to none. I'm able to use every single class I've taken in my business, and my business has grown. Not only my business, but I'm able to do community development and train other leaders, young leaders, middle-aged leaders, you know, older leaders, and then I'm able to pass on leadership abilities and skills, you know, to other people. This program has a number of key strengths. Depending on which concentration, whether it's education or business or, or ministry, because it's a terminal degree, a PhD, it opens doors of opportunity. God can use this program in so many different ways. 
in pastoral ministry, it can open doors to greater opportunities to share Christ in, in different contexts. In, in organizational management, it opens doors to new leadership positions. Some, for many of our students, that's, that's been their, their story. And in educational administration, it has done the same as well. Since I've been in the program, um, the flexibility of the schedule, because I've, I had to relocate from one end of the country to the other. I had to go to China for two adoptions. Uh, last year, my daughter had open heart surgery. So we've been able to work around that. PIU students, they walk the talk. The professors, they walk the talk. So they... Getting set for hoops tonight here from Piedmont International University. And we'll get you again those starting lineups for your home standing Piedmont International Bruins. It'll be Ashley Lane running the point. She wears number one. They go big from there. Alicia Cumberbatch getting the start. 5'8 freshman out of Indian Trail, North Carolina. Monifa Angle also getting the start. Junior 5'9 out of Concord. 15 points, 7 rebounds a few weeks ago against Welsh. Number 22, Arian Rump. Freshman forward 5'10 out of Norcross, Georgia getting the start. She'll wear number 22 and wearing number 24 to jump things up. Six foot sophomore forward, Zania Kessler out of Atlanta, Georgia, averaging nearly a double-double this season. 13 points, 8.3 rebounds per contest. As you see it, it's Piedmont in their home whites. And for Appalachian Bible College, again playing their first game in five years. They're in those dark blue jerseys. Kessler will jump it up, and she will do so against Kayla Krusen. Tap one by the Bruins, and they quickly go on the attack. Head of the key, nice look underneath. Shot fake, Cumberbatch lays it up and in, and the Bruins on the board first. As Cumberbatch gets the lay in and a 2-0 lead here for Piedmont. Nice interior feed. Peterson gets trapped in the paint. Lost the handle, but I think a foul is going to be called underneath. It will indeed be the case, and it looks like it's going to go against Ashley Lane. They had her tied up in the paint and lost the handle. Quick entry pass stolen away. Long lead ahead. Ashley Lane all by herself. She'll lay it up and in with the right hand, and just like that, a 4-0 lead here for Piedmont. 40 seconds gone in the contest. As Peterson runs the point, cross courts it over to Playstead. Gets it inside. Tried to scoop it up in there was Peterson. She couldn't get it to go. And Lane will lead the attack for the Bruins. Long lead ahead, nice find. Can't get the finish underneath is Rumpf. Rebound battled for. Rumpf gets the offensive board. Put back try, no good. And finally, Appalachian Bible College controls the rebound. Minute gone, four nothing lead for the Bruins. Low play in the dribble. Lieb has it. Gets it to Playstead. Trying to find something inside. Nothing there. They play catch on the perimeter. Lieb had it on the right wing. Finds the cutting Taylor. Rolls it off inside. Cruson had it. And a tie up. It'll stay with Appalachia. But they only got four on the shot clock. So they have to hurry off the inbound to get a shot off. Still looking for their first points of the ball game. Playstead to inbound, throws it away, stolen away by Rumpf, and quickly they lead it ahead. Lane again all by herself, head fakes, lays it up, no good. Battle for the rebound, and Lane keeps it alive for the Bruins. They've got it, Cumberbatch traveled with it, though, before she could put it on the deck. Turnover by Piedmont. Give it back to the Lady Warriors. 4-0 lead for Piedmont. Again, a short bench tonight for the Bruins. Just two players on the bench as Taylor will fire up a three. No good. Rebound yanked down by Angle. She'll get it to Lane. Again, a big size advantage for the Bruins in this contest, even with that short bench. And a 2-3 zone look in the half court for the Warriors. Lane swings it around the perimeter. Look for Rump from the baseline. Can't get it to fall off the heel of the iron. Rebound pulled down, Kiki Peterson for Appalachian Bible College. 7.40 to go, first quarter. 4-0 lead for the Bruins. 
They go zone as well, 3-2 look. That's Kessler at the head of it. They dump it off inside, shot up, and a foul call is going to go on the floor, and it's going to go against Cumberbatch. That should be two shots. It will indeed for Kayla Cruson. Cruson will try and get Appalachian Bible College on the board first. Or on the board for the first time in this game. First free throw back of the iron. Aaron Brunk with you here from Winston-Salem, Piedmont International University, two and five on the air. Taking on Appalachian Bible College. And Appalachian can't get on the board as both free throws off the mark. And Monifa Angle with a nice rebound. Here comes Lane, nice feed on the inside. Kessler lays it up and in. Great look from Lane, and it's a six nothing lead. Kessler gets her first two. 7.15 to go first quarter. Appalachian will turn it over. As Peterson got caught in the air, was trying to get it to Playstead over there on the left wing and just sailed it into the Bruin bench. Caleb Money calls the play. Ashley Lane relays it to the troops. Kessler, a wide open look from three. Too strong, rebound, though by Angle. Bruins will reset the offense. Fresh 30 as Lane head fakes and drives. Finds Kessler ahead of the key. She'll drive and kick. Angle, wide open look from the corner. Too strong with that one. Offensive board put back up and good from Cumberbatch. Good, strong rebound. By Alicia on the inside. She lays it up and in. A chance for the old-fashioned three-point play. No subs yet for either team. Three minutes and 18 seconds in. Free throw is good for Cumberbatch. That's a nine to nothing lead. Appalachian into the front court. It's Peterson, run the show, flips it off to the baseline and they throw it away again, too high for Lieb. And we'll get our first substitution of the contest. That's number five, Patience Cox. Who will check in. Cox spells Playstead. 2-3 zone again for Appalachian. Bruins get it inside, work it back out. Kessler trying the cross-court feed. Lane keeps it in play. Finds Rumpf in the corner. She'll fire up a three. And they'll say two had the toe on the line. So Rump rattles it home for two more. And it's 11 to nothing. The advantage. Appalachian looking for their first points. Off the top of the backboard, out of play. It caught the rope there, suspending the basket from the ceiling. Out of play. Good look for Appalachian. That trip down, one of their first good looks they've had. Still looking for their first points, though. Four minutes into the contest. 11-0 right out of the gate. Lane. She'll fire up the lefty three or knocks it down. Lane's got five, and it's a 14 to nothing lead for Piedmont. Still looking for their first point to Appalachian. Can't get that one to go on the baseline drive. Quick lead ahead. Here comes Lane. One on three, and she'll lay it up and in with the left hand. Seven points from Ashley Lane, and a timeout is going to be called by Amy Stiles for Piedmont International. Not even to the midway mark of this first quarter yet, but Piedmont in full control as Appalachian calls a 30-second timeout just to try and regroup things here, see if they can try and get some points on the board. Haven't had terrible looks, but haven't had a whole lot of luck getting back in transition D, and that speed we talked about in the pregame, Ashley Lane, notably, getting out in transition, helping Piedmont build this 16-point advantage. Also mentioned, Maya Scott, likely see her in the second quarter. She's got the most speed on this Bruins team. They've already taken advantage without her on the floor. 
They feed it inside, trying to break through that 2-3 zone. Taylor head fakes, drives, hit on her way to the hoop. And a foul called on Sherlita Hackett, who just checked into the game, picks up her first foul. That's the third foul against Piedmont here in the early going. Nearing the midway mark of this first quarter. And finally, there's points. Phoebe Taylor rattles home the free throw. Gets Appalachian on the board. Trying to make it a two-for-two two trip here. Left it short. Rebound battled for off the hands. Of, it looked like it was last touched by Piedmont, and it was indeed. So it'll stay here with the Lady Warriors. They make the switch. Taylor will trigger the inbound. Gets it into Peterson. Right back to Taylor. Tried to dump it off inside. Stolen away. Rump. It's got Lane on the lead. Lane. Through contact, can't get it to fall on a foul call on the shot. We'll send her to the line. Patience Cox called for the foul. That's two on Appalachian. 4.52 to go. 16 to 1. The score after that 16 to nothing run to open the contest for the Bruins. Left-hander at the line, left the first one short. Lane's got seven points here in the early going. As Playstead checks back in, Cox to the bench for the Lady Warriors. Lane will try and split the pair. The south ball knocks that one down. She's got eight. And it's a 17-1 lead for the Bruins. Peterson kicks to the near wing. Taylor back to Peterson trying to get it inside. Pass stolen away by Lane. She'll lead the breakout up ahead to Kessler. Kessler by herself. Left-hander lays it in. And it's 19-1. Kessler's got four. The Bruins continue to stretch it out, and they'll steal another one away. It's Kessler with those long arms. Three on two on the break. Dumps it off inside. Rump with the right hand. Lay in. 21 to 1. 4 10 to go here in the first. Bounce it to Peterson here on the near side. Taylor will take the long two. Back iron. Nope. Rump yanks down the rebound. Again, they'll run. Kessler. Leading the charge, and she'll lay it in. Her sixth point of the contest. 23 to 1. So we tick under four minutes to go. They try to feed it inside. Stolen away again. Another turnover. Hackett got this steal. That'll lead the breakout, and Rumpf will slow things down as Coach Money says, let's pump the brakes here. Let's run an offensive set. Lane to Rump. 19 to shoot as Rump crosses over, lost the handle in the paint. She got it back, kicks to the corner. Lane will fire up a three and knock it down. Already into double figures is Ashley Lane. She's got 11. And with 3.10 to go here on the first, it's 26 to 1. Trying to find the cutter back door. Stole it away. Good read there underneath by Cumberbatch. She'll get it to Rumpf, and they'll slow it down again. Under three minutes to go in the first. Interior pass to Hackett, right back out. Rump, right wing, three. She's got it. Rumpf with her seventh point of the contest, 29-1. to one. As we tick towards two and a half to go. Fires up a three. Taylor, no good, off the mark. Nice rebound there by Hackett. Good positioning underneath. Bruins making sure. And Appalachian is one and done every trip down the floor. Doing good work on the offensive end themselves. They find Hackett open for three. It goes down and pops out. Sherlita Hackett was looking for her first points of the night and just spun it out. 2.05 to go first quarter. Appalachian, a couple of subs trying to check in at the next whistle. Around a screen, Taylor feeds it off to the corner, lost the handle, Lieb, 
And a touch foul preventing the breakout. And a timeout going to be called. Here with a minute 55 to go first quarter. We'll keep it right here. 29 to 1. It was a 16 to nothing lead for the Bruins early in the contest. Just five and a half minutes in. Or check that. Four and a half minutes in. They had a 16 to nothing lead. And they've just continued to build on it. The only points so far in the contest for Appalachian. Phoebe Taylor splitting a pair of free throws midway through the quarter. She's got the lone point for Appalachian Bible College. And again, this. Lady Warriors team playing their first official game in five years. And so far, still haven't converted on a field goal attempt. So Bruins basketball. Taylor will walk it into the front court. Slow playing it around the 2-3 zone. Into the corner angle. Back to the head of the key. Lane flips it inside. Nice look to Cumberbatch. Nice move and a nice scooping right hand spinner off the window. Cumberbatch has seven and with a minute and a half to go in the first, it's 31 to one. Everybody getting in on the action for the Bruins as they go back to that 3-2 zone. To the near wing, Lieb lost the handle. Ends up in the hands momentarily of Cox and a jump ball is called. Possession arrow points the way of the Bruins and yet another turnover for Appalachian. As it looked like Amy Stiles wanted to get a sub into the contest. She'll hold off on that. She did get one in at the whistle. Rachel Rowe, number 50, there at the top of that 2-3 zone. In for the first time. Kessler on the left wing, cross-court feed. Nice play made, nice feed off to the baseline angle. Didn't take the shot and then she traveled with it. Just trying to get it back to Lane at the top of the key and trying to use some more clock on these possessions and shuffle the feet. The Warriors will get a sub here. Winkleman, Emily Winkleman, freshman forward out of Bernie, California, checks in for the first time as we go under a minute to go in the first. 31 to 1, the lead for the Bruins. Bounces it far wing to row. Her pass attempt to the top of the key. Taken away by Angle. Angle's got the three on three, and the Bruins will again slow the pace, let everybody get back, and they'll run an offensive set here and have a small child stumbling out onto the floor. That'll stop play momentarily as Alicia Cumberbatch over to help. Hoist the youngster back into the stands. Reset. Shot clock did not reset. It's at 20. Game clock at 35 to go here in this opening quarter. 31 to 1 the lead. Kessler thought about the three, gets it to Cumberbatch instead. 10 seconds to a cutting rump, and she'll float it in for two more. Arian Rump up to nine points, and it's up to a 33 to 1 lead. Still no field goals for Appalachian Bible College. Winkleman in the corner, gets it off Taylor, and she was trapped there. Bounces it off Kessler's foot and out of bounds. It'll stay with Appalachian. Nine and a half seconds to go. They can take the final shot of this quarter. They bounce it in. Taylor's got it, and she had her heel on the end line. Heel on the sideline right in front of us, and they'll turn it over yet again. Now Piedmont with an opportunity to take the final shot. 33-1. to one. Lane, four seconds, three seconds. Going to have to hurry. Rump at the horn. No good. Can't get it to fall. At the end of one, it's 33 to one at the end of the first quarter. And now we'll likely see Scott check in as well. We'll take a break, 33 to one, Piedmont International leading Appalachian Bible College here on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live.
Second quarter action about to get underway here from Winston-Salem. Aaron Brunk along with you is Piedmont International controlling this contest. They lead Appalachian Bible College at the end of one quarter, 33-1. to one. And the Lady Warriors will open the second quarter with the basketball, still looking for their first field goal, and they will not get it on that layup attempt. Too strong from Cruson. Lead pass ahead. Here comes Scott scooping layup. She just checked in. Kessler offensive board. Put back attempt, no good. She's going to get another crack at it. Lays it up, rattles off, and finally the rebound pulled down by Kiki Peterson for Appalachian Bible College. Amaya Scott checked in, and just as quickly as she checked in, she was on the break and, and talked about her speed during the first quarter. Bruins have the advantage in spades in that category, and it just went up a little bit with Scott back on the floor as they throw that one into the Bruin bench. Another turnover off the hand of Patient Cox. Patience Cox, check that. 50 seconds gone in this second quarter. Still looking for our first points of the quarter. 33 to one. Scott to Kessler here on the near wing. Working it around the zone. They try to feed it inside to Scott and it's stolen away. Peterson, one on three, had a lead. Instead she'll take it herself and it's swatted away by Scott. But a foul call is gonna go on Amaya Scott. That's gonna be her first, the first of the quarter here on the Bruins. Good job getting back in transition. Just too much body on the block attempt. Peterson, 5-2. Junior out of Beckley, West Virginia. Can't convert on the first free throw. So they're one for three at the line so far this evening. Second free throw on the way, and she misses it. She'll get another one as Scott jumped the gun. Came into the lane as Peterson held that ball a long time. Scott jumped the gun. She knew it all the way. Peterson, another opportunity, and she does indeed convert. So make it two for four from the stripe for Appalachian Bible College. It's 33 to two. Minute 15 played here in the second quarter. Kessler to the corner to Cumberbatch, back to Lane. They try the cross court to Scott. Around the perimeter, Kessler running the floor. Wide open three, and she buries it. Zania Kessler, wide open catch and shoot three. She started here on the left wing, worked all the way around to the far corner and buries the triple, 36 to two. 8.15 to go in the first half. Peterson drives to the baseline, flips it back out to Cox. She'll fire up a three, that one's well off the mark. Taylor there for the offensive board, partially blocked by Scott though, and she comes away with the rebound. Bruins will get it into the front court and slow it down. Lane again to run the point. 20 on the timer, under eight minutes to go first half. Kessler, quick interior pass to Cumberbatch. Back outside, they move it around. Scott drives, pulls up too hard off the window. Offensive board though to Rump. Fresh 30. Piedmont will slow things yet again. Scott, open look. Feeds it inside, Cumberbatch into traffic and her shot swatted out of there by Cruson. It's a good defensive effort that go around from Appalachian. One of their best defensive sets of the game, but then they throw it away, looking for the cutter, couldn't find her. Now Scott, one on one. Euro step through the lane, scoops it up for her first points of the ball game. Maya Scott with the Euro step. And now she lost the shoe, so it's five on four here on this end, and Appalachian throws it away. They had the advantage. Couldn't get into their offensive set. They throw it away. And still looking for their first field goal of the contest. 38 to two. The lead for Piedmont. Can tell you that this season, Piedmont did have a game where they scored 43 and a loss, and well on their way to eclipsing that here in the first half as Kessler nearly banked home the three, popped out. 
Now here comes Peterson, kicks it to Rowe. Rowe back to the head of the key to Peterson. Peterson trying to find somebody to get it to, finally does. It's Playstead. Playstead trying the interior pass, swatted away by Kessler. The lead pass back to her, and she'll lay it in with the right hand. Kessler gets into double figures with that layup. She's got 11 points. And then 40 to 2. The score, 6 10 to go here in this first half, and a foul on the reach. BB Taylor down in a heap. See who they got on the foul. I believe they got Rumpf on the foul. They did indeed, so that'll be her first, second on Piedmont here in the corner, and it's stalled away off the inbound. Kessler all alone ahead, and a nice play on the backside. Defense, Kiki Peterson getting her hand in there to knock it away. Six minutes left here in the first half, a 40-2 lead. As Rump catches the inbound and then promptly throws it in to the Lady Warriors bench. She was looking for Kessler. Kessler cut. And she wasn't expecting the cut. So Kessler checks out. Lane comes back on. Two already into double figures. Lane with 11. Kessler with 11. Appalachian Silic for their first field goal and nearly got it there. As it looked like Cruson was going to have the layup. And an over the back foul there on Rump. She collects her second in as many trips. 5.45 to go. Three fouls on the Bruins here in this quarter. Officials discussing potential there for a technical. Rump, I think, able to pick it up after she slammed that ball. Hackett set to check in after the first free throw. Cruson knocks home the first. So all three of Appalachian's points have come from the free throw stripes. Still without a field goal yet, though. They're three for five at the, at the line. Second one's up, and the second one's good. So they are four for six from the free throw line. Last second substitution there. There's Cox checking back into the game for the Lady Warriors. Lane runs the show. They bounce it off to the corner. Angle back to the head of the key. Cumberbatch into the paint. 15-footer too strong off the window. Rebound pulled down by Cruson. Appalachian brings it front court. 5.20 to go. First half. Peterson. Back to Taylor, and a reach-in foul is going to be called on, I believe they're going to get Scott for the foul. They will indeed. Something to keep an eye on. We mentioned a few times the short bench, just seven players suited up for Piedmont in this game. And Amaya Scott, he didn't play in the first quarter, has already collected two fouls. Arian Rumpf on the bench. She's got two as well. That's a quick inbound, and the first field goal of the ball game comes courtesy of Kayla Cruson as she flips it up and in. And with five minutes to go in the first half. It's 40 to six. Cross court look, crossing over in the paint and a travel angle got it stuck on her hip, couldn't get the cross court pass back. 4.46 to go. Forty to six. Fire up a three. Back iron, good positioning on the rebound, and it's knocked out of bounds. They'll say last touched by Cruson. Good position there by Hackett. Get her body in position. They roll it in, and Lane nearly lost it off her shins out of bounds, able to scoop it up. Rump on the near wing. Lost her dribble, looking for some help. Goes all the way across 
to Lane. They play catch inside out. Lane buries the lefty three. She's got 14 first half points. She had 19 earlier this year against Mid-Atlantic and stole it away momentarily, but it rolls right to Cox. Cox finds some help in the form of Taylor. Nice feed on the inside. Left it short, though, for Krusen. Great pass by Taylor, and that was, without a doubt, the best offense we've seen from Appalachian here in this contest. They got the steal, moved the ball well in transition. As Lane rolls it into the front court, picks it up, hands off to Rump. They'll go around the perimeter. Scott to the corner. Angle thought about the three. Instead, they'll dump it inside Rump. Back out. Angle will take it this time. Too strong. Rebound comes out to Scott, and she'll drive the baseline. Another Euro step. Left it short. But the rebound, they'll say off the hands of an Appalachian player out of bounds. They'll stay with the Bruins. Kessler comes back on. Hackett checks out. 43-6, the score. Rump drives, crosses with the pass, and Kessler can't get the layup to go, and they'll try the quick lead ahead. Peterson has it. One on three, had her shot partially blocked, got it back, scoops it over to Cox. Cox tried to float it up, can't get it to fall, and it's tied up underneath. Rump and Krusen tied up inside. Jump ball, arrow points the way of the Lady Warriors. Three minutes to go, first half. Taylor triggers the inbound. Peterson fires up the long two. Missed everything. Scott gets the rebound. She'll try the lead pass ahead. Threads the needle. Rumpf got the ball, nearly got the layup. She'll go to the line for a pair. (laughs) What a throw from Scott threading the needle through defenders and Rumpf making a fantastic catch nearly getting the layup to fall. Pair of free throws coming here. That foul against Rachel Rowe. First of the quarter against Appalachian. First against Rowe. Substitution for Appalachian. We'll get it for you after the rump free throw. Second one up. Back iron, front iron, no good. Lane there for the offensive board. And she'll go back up with it and lay it in. (laughs) 16 for Lane. And it's 45 to 6. Taylor with the crossover at the head of the key. Olivia Lavallee. Has checked in for the first time. She wears number 12. As Cox sidesteps her defender and lays it up and in from the free throw line with a little right-handed floater. Second field goal for Appalachian. Inching their way towards double figures. It's 45 to 8. Scott to the corner to Rump. Back out and it's stolen away. Here comes Rowe. One-on-one with Lane. And Lane knocks it out of her hands. Rowe got it back. Ball still alive, Rowe comes away with it. She'll flip it outside. Taylor drives, tried to lay it off underneath, and we've got a kick ball. Good defense there by the Bruins to not allow the easy layup. Appalachia look like they're starting to put it together a little bit on the offensive end. Minute 50 to go here in the first half. Is that three ball way off the mark, rebound, batted around. Lavallee comes away with it. Back over to Rowe. Top of the key, Peterson. Traces the arc with the dribble. Now reset the offense. One second on the timer. Did she get it off? No, she did not get it off. Shot clock expiring and actually got me too until the crowd finally yelled at the last second. Off that inbound, you forgot that the shot clock didn't reset. The Bruins catch a break there. 45 to 8 the lead, a minute 10. To go here in the first half. Kessler cross court to Scott. Scott drives off the window for two more. Amaya Scott's got four. And it's 47 to 8 as we tick under a minute to go here in the first half. Bruins looking to snap a three-game losing skid, pick up their third win of the season as Kessler 
with those long arms, snatches away the interior pass, and they'll slow play it. See if they try and go two for one here on this possession. Kessler had the look from three, didn't take it. Around the wing, they dump it off inside Rumpf. Through contact, can't get the shot to go down. But she'll get a pair of free throws. Taylor got her on the arm. Second foul of the quarter. So neither team in danger of putting the other on the line. 30 seconds to go. First half, rump for two more. She was 0 for 2 on her first trip, but buries that one. Rumpf now into double figures with that free throw. She's got 10. Kessler into double figures as well with 11. Second free throw up. Second free throw is good. So 11 for Rumpf. And a 49 to 8 lead. And nearly stolen away by Kessler. Trying to get it across. They've got two seconds, one second. They finally get it across. And then Kessler reaches in on Taylor. I beg your pardon, that was that is going to be the fifth foul, so that is going to put Phoebe Taylor at the free throw line. Taylor with one point in the contest. She had the first point of the ball game for Appalachian. Their first point in five years. And she knocks home that one. They've converted at the free throw stripe. Scott will go all the way down to the other end of the floor with 20 seconds, and the Bruins can hold for the final shot of the half after this free throw. Second free throw up, second free throw good as well, so Taylor's got three points. And Appalachian is into double figures, and now they'll press in the backcourt. They get it ahead to Rump, looking for Scott. Finally get it ahead, interior pass the lane, lane through traffic, kicks out. Kessler, open look for three, back iron no good, rebound to Lieb. Now Appalachian for a shot at the final at the horn. Peterson to the top, Cox had it stolen away, and with that, that'll end the first half. 49 to 10 at the end of the first half. A little bit of life shown there. By Appalachian there in the second quarter, though. Into the first quarter, it was 33 to 1. A 16 to 9 quarter there. Bruins still win it, but Appalachian starting to show some signs of life on the offensive end and on the defensive end as well. 49 to 10. We'll take a break, come back, recap that first half for you, get you some of the first half numbers as well as the Bruins looking for their third win of the season. They are. 20 minutes away from it, looking good here after 20 from Winston-Salem. 49 to 10, Piedmont International University leading Appalachian Bible College here on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Yeah, yeah. Low, low, low. Yeah. 360 in the contract, never that. I just take the contact, I bring it back. I'm running on the fast break behind the back. Yeah, this that, this that, this that penny with yeah. the shack. If he's passing me the rock, you might not get it back. They never gave a hand, now they wanna give me that. I don't know where you been. I got fear of God, ain't no fear of man. These them air minios, yeesh, need a pair of them. Ooh, LA, 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 man, I feel like magic. LA, 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 I can't stand the traffic. West side for the vacation. Yeah, West, West Brook yeah. on the isolation. Yeah. So New York City gotta keep it, me keep man, no, uh. The bubble jacket with the piffy winkle camel, uh. From Argentina, it's a military issue. And Lloyd said, don't mix the pitbull with the shit, so don't. Do it. I just do it off the backboard. Game winner, I'm the one they ask for. Magic. Double call plays in a huddle. God, I'm in trouble. Show these want me sub. 
for men and they sure ain't being subtle. Well, now the hometown kids finally took the tour far and I don't ever ever chase dreams, man, I stalk them. Bruins rolling at halftime. Two and five, Piedmont International coming in with a three game losing streak. Well, they look like they were well on their way to snapping that and picking up their third win of the season. The 16 to nothing run to open the ball game really kind of put this one out of out of doubt in a hurry. 16 to nothing, five minutes into the contest. It took till four minutes to go in the first quarter for Appalachian Bible College to even get on the board. Their first points coming by way of free throw. And at the end of the first quarter, how about this? 33 to one. You heard that right. 33 to one. Ashley Ng was already in the double figures before the first quarter had even come to a close. She leads all scores. She's got 16 points to lead Piedmont at the break. More of the same in the second quarter. It was Piedmont jumping out and extending their lead to 40 to two. Another free throw there by Appalachian in the midst of all that. Six minutes to go in the half, a 40 to two advantage, but not to be left in the dust. Appalachian did finally get something going offensively, a little 4-0 burst of their own over a minute 20 stretch, finally getting their first field goal of the season on a little floating layup from uh, Kayla Krusen. She got a little layup and they would add a, another field goal later in the half by way of Patience Cox who hit a nice 15 foot floater from the free throw line to put the Appalachian Bible College Lady Warriors into double figures getting them to 10 points just before the first half came to a close but really you just you look at it in the first half completely dominated by Piedmont International University not something we didn't maybe expect coming into this one again Appalachian Bible College playing their first game in five years as a program they've had a few scrimmages but this is their first on the schedule official game of the year and it has gone about as we expected this is a team with not a lot of experience and maybe not a lot of confidence in themselves and certainly the Bruins have taken advantage as we take a look at some of the first half numbers already told you Ashley Lane leads all scorers she's got 16 points and approaching her season high which was 19 against mid-atlantic back in November she will almost certainly eclipse her season high before the evening is out other double figure scores for the Bruins in the first half Zania Kessler with 11 points Arian Rump also with 11 points those are your double figure scores for the Bruins in the first half. Alicia Cumberbatch chipping in with seven, and Amaya Scott, who did not play in the first quarter, has come in, and she's got four points, all of those points coming in the second quarter. We told you the first points of the season for Appalachian Bible College coming at the free throw stripe. They came off the hand of Phoebe Taylor. She is the only Lady Warrior that has any collegiate playing experience. She's a transfer from Davis College, she played hoops there and she has three points to lead the way for the Appalachian, or check that, she does not lead the way as we've actually got Kayla Krusen with four points at the half. She had the first field goal of the night for Appalachian Bible College. She has four points on the evening to lead the way for them. Other scores, we told you Phoebe Taylor, all three of her points coming at the free throw line. Patience Cox with that floater just before the end of the first half. She's got two, and Kiki Peterson chipping in one from the free throw line. She had a one for two trip in the second quarter, and that was actually one point that was aided on a lane violation. She had missed both free throws, but the second one she got another shot at because of a lane violation, able to convert on that one to get her on the board. So again, it's 49 to 10. Piedmont International University in control over Appalachian Bible College. That's a look back at the first half, your first half numbers. We'll take a break. We will come back here in about five minutes or so. We'll have a second half action for you. It'll be Appalachian, or check that, it'll be Piedmont International ball when we resume play in the second half. Piedmont International leading Appalachian Bible College 49 to 10 here at the break and it's coming to you here on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Lead by example and therefore their students just emulate and lead by example in the communities they come from. It's just that simple. To know that not only are my professors top-notch, not only 
do they know, you know, everything in their field, they're leaders in their field, they're knowledgeable, they're guiding you, they're praying for you. And to know that makes all the difference in the world. It's cost effective, it got the goal of having the Christian aspect brought into leadership and how that fits all together, and then the staff support. But if you make the decision and you decide to come, it's the best decision you'll ever make and you will not be the same afterwards. I knew I had made the right decision. This program is unique in that it, it addresses three key leadership areas. Organizational management, educational administration, and ministry administration. I would say the payoff is in ways that I never imagined. I never thought I would have such a supportive network. I never thought I would meet such great people who were at different points in their life. I mean, you can be sitting next to someone who's the CEO, and you sit next to people who are doctors. You also have to sit next to people who are stay-at-home moms who have decided to go back to school. It has enriched me in ways I just never thought it, I, a PhD program would. I have a nuclear engineering technology bachelor's degree. I got an MBA from a secular school, and I knew that there was a whole Christian aspect of leadership. You read the books about Nehemiah, David, uh, Christ himself. And so I wanted to build that into my learning and knowledge, so I started looking for a Christian college. Piedmont comes across my computer, and they're on the top of all these lists, best this, top that, top 25, top. And I said, okay, this school seems to have a reputation for academic excellence. The professors, the relationships we're building, and the leadership program is second to none. I'm able to use every single class I've taken in my business, and my business has grown. Not only my business, but I'm able to do community development and train other leaders, young leaders, middle-aged leaders, you know, older leaders, and then I'm able to pass on leadership abilities and skills, you know, to other people. This program has a number of key strengths. Depending on which concentration, whether it's education or business or, or ministry, because it's a terminal degree, a PhD, it opens doors of opportunity. God can use this program in so many different ways. In pastoral ministry, it can open doors to greater opportunities to share Christ in, in different contexts. In, in organizational management, it opens doors to new leadership positions. Some, for many of our students, that's, that's been their, their story. And in educational administration, it has done the same as well. Since I've been in the program, um, the flexibility of the schedule, because I've, I had to relocate from one end of the country to the other. I had to go to China for two adoptions. Uh, last year, my daughter had open heart surgery. So we've been able to work around that. PIU students, they walk the talk. The professors, they walk the talk. So they lead by example, and therefore their students just emulate and lead by example in the communities they come from. It's just that simple. To know that not only are my professors top notch, not only do they know, you know, everything in their field, they're leaders in their field, they're knowledgeable, they're guiding you, they're praying for you. And to know that makes all the difference in the world. It's cost effective, it got the goal of having the Christian aspect brought into leadership and how that fits all together, and then the staff support. But if you make the decision and you decide to come, it's the best decision you'll ever make and you will not be the same afterwards. I knew I had made the right decision. Yeah, yeah. Low, low, low. Yeah. 
360 in the contract, never that I just take the contact, I bring it back I'm running on the fast break, behind the back Yeah, this that, this that, this that penny with yeah. the shack If he's passing me the rock, you might not get it back They never gave a hand, now they wanna give me that I don't know where you been, I got fear of God Ain't no fear of man, at least them air minios Yeesh, need a pair of them Ooh, LA, 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 man, I feel like magic LA, 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 I can't stand the traffic. West side for the vacation. Yeah, West, West Brook yeah, on the isolation. Yeah. So New York City gotta keep it, Mickey keep Mano, uh. The bubble jacket with the pimpy winkle camo, uh. From Argentina, it's a military issue. Uh. And Lord said, don't mix the people with the shit, so don't do it. Don't. I just do it off the backboard. Game winner, I'm the one they ask for. Magic. Second half action, just a couple of moments away here from Winston-Salem. Airbrunk along with you, Piedmont International leading Appalachian Bible College by a score of 49-10. to 10. 16-0 run to open the contest for the Bruins, and they have yet to look back. Ashley Lane leads all scorers. She's got 16 in the first half. Arian Rump has 11 first half points, as does Sonia Kessler, both of them with 11 points. Alicia Cumberbatch chipping in seven first half points. And Amaya Scott with four in the first half. Just two field goals in the first half for Appalachian Bible College. And it'll be Bruins basketball to start the second half with that 39 point advantage. Looking to snap their three game losing skid and pick up their third win of the season. Lane to run the point. And we've got whistles and stoppages for, could not tell exactly what happened there. May have been the uh, official score hadn't quite made it back to the table yet. But now they'll inbound from in front of their own bench, get it in, and it's Lane. And almost no doubt Bruins will use as much shot clock as they can here in the second half, Scott with a wide open look from three, missed everything. Kessler got the offensive board in her putback attempt off the top of the backboard, and it'll be a turnover on the missed shot. And ABC will get it for the first time here in the second half. Kiki Peterson running the point. One point for her, a well, one for two trip to the free throw line in the first half. Right wing. Cruson bounces it off to Taylor and it was stolen away by Scott and they're going to say off the shin of Taylor and it'll be another turnover. Don't have official stats but the turnover margin is heavy in favor of Piedmont International. A lot of turnovers for Appalachian Bible College in this game. Scott on the cross court gets it inside and Cumberbatch hit on her way up. She'll go to the line for a pair of free throws. Didn't see who the foul call was on. May have been against Brittany Hames. Nope, it'll go against Cruson. So Cruson picks up her second. Cumberbatch picks up her eighth point with that free throw. And with that, Piedmont at the 50-point mark if they... Change the scoring there. That's still 49 on the board. Did 
So ball knocked out of bounds off of Piedmont, so that first free throw no good. Thought Cumberbatch got it, but it popped out. And my mistake on that, and it's stolen away by Scott. Two on two on the break. She's got Lane with her on her right hip, but she will take it all the way herself, hit on her way to the hoop, and count the basket, and one coming for Amaya Scott. She's got six, and that puts the Bruins over 50 points. Great job on the steal yet again. The Bruins reading those interior passes perfectly, getting the steals, and Scott getting the bucket. She's got seven, 52 to 10. Minute and a half gone here in the second half. Hames, number 22, is in for the first time. She got the start here in the second half and another steal on another interior pass. Kessler going in, had it poked away momentarily from behind, tried to dump it off to Rump, knocked out of her hands, and they'll say last touched by Rump. And a turnover there by the Bruins. As Hames checks out, Playstead checks back in for Appalachian. Peterson, the junior out of Beckley, West Virginia, runs the point. And another turnover on an interior pass. Lane this time comes up with the loose ball. Two minutes played here in the third quarter. And four points on the board in the second half. For Piedmont, we're going to have a three-second call inside as Cumberbatch camped out, didn't keep moving, and Caleb Money trying to encourage his troops to Keep up the energy, keep up the effort here with a 43-point advantage. Sometimes be tough, easy to get lackadaisical when you're up by that much as Scott with another steal. She's going to go one-on-one with Rowe, and then she flips it off to Kessler, who will lay it in with the right hand. Great find there by Scott, good patience by her. Seeing the one-on-one, seeing Rowe come over, and a great job by Kessler helping out on the weak side. And Scott trying for yet another steal as Taylor dribbles into a double team, has to back it out to Cruson. 15 on the shot clock, and she'll fire up a deep three and miss everything. It'll bounce out of bounds, and it'll be Bruin basketball. and Dead ball rebound to the Bruins. And right now, I think if you're ABC, you'll take that. At least it wasn't a turnover and a fast break for Piedmont. Lane slowly brings it into the front court, bounces to the corner, Cumberbatch. Kessler to Scott, open in the corner, left it short. Cumberbatch with the rebound, keeps it alive. Second attempt, no good, but she's hit from behind, and she'll go to the line for two. Foul's going to go against Playstead. That'll be the third against Appalachian here in the quarter. 3.06 3.06 off the clock in this second half. As Cumberbatch spins that one around. Fifty-six to ten. Second one, good as well. Make it fifty-seven to ten. I told you earlier that. Cumberbatch had missed a free throw on the first of two. She did make the first one. They just hadn't put the point up on the board yet. So she's into double figures now. She's got 10, and here's another steal. She's looking for more. Cumberbatch, Euro stepped through the lane, traveled before she got it to rump. As Coach Money tells her, just take it. You were there. You had it. Take it to the hoop. We'll get substitutions for Piedmont. As Monifa Angle checks in, Ashley Lane will get a breather. 8-0, Piedmont outscoring Appalachian here in this second half. And a timeout is going to be called by Amy Stiles, and it'll be a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it here with 6.28 to go in the third. And just kind of resetting things for you where we are right now. Complete and utter domination by the Bruins in this contest. Open the game on a 16 to nothing run, and with four minutes to go in the first quarter, they were leading 23 to one. It took 
until the second quarter for Appalachian to get their first field goal of the contest. They've converted on two field goals so far in this game. Their other six points all coming at the free throw line. So they break the huddle. See what they drew up during the timeout. Coach Amy Stiles kick-starting this program after five years of no women's basketball at Appalachian Bible College. They played a few scrimmages, but it was their first official basketball game. And it's all gone the way of the Bruins as they force another turnover. Outlet ahead to Scott. Scott trying to weave her way through the defense. Bounces it over. Layup up and good for Monifa Angle. And for Angle, that's her first two of the ball game. So all seven active players for the Bruins in this game have registered points as Appalachian keeps it alive. Fade away on the baseline from Krusen, and she knocks it down. Her second field goal, she's got six points. And it's 59 to 12 as we approach the midway mark of this third quarter. 59 to 12, Kessler. Cross court to Angle. Gets it inside Rump from the free throw line. Side iron, followed her shot, got it back. She'll drive the baseline, flip it up with the right hand. Rebound knocked around, and finally Appalachian comes away with it momentarily. Playstead got it, and a reach-in foul is going to be called on Rumpf. That's going to be her third. Maybe a bit of a frustration foul by Rumpf as she reached in. She'll check out. Hackett will check back in and beg your pardon. Hackett has not scored yet, so she is the lone Bruin yet to register a point so far in this contest. Everyone else has played, only seven active tonight, and another steal taken away by Angle. She'll bounce it ahead. Nice look to Kessler. Kessler lays it in with the right hand. Maya Kessler having herself a great night. She's got 15 points, and it's 61 to 12. 4.40 to go third quarter. Rowe gets it to the corner. Around the screen, back to the head of the key. Back to Rowe, good touch pass to Cruson. Back to the top, Peterson drives, bounces it over. Taylor for three, off the mark, and rebound controlled. Outletted, and Lane stepped on the sideline. Just too high on the outlet pass there by Hackett. And nearly sailed it into the bench. As Lane tried to keep it in play. Couldn't do the tightrope. Just got the toe on the end line. The ball back over to ABC. Cox asking for the ball on the right wing. Gets it then quickly over to Rowe. Rowe to a wide open Taylor. She'll try a three from the other wing. Misses everything and it'll go out of bounds. Taylor's gotten a few good looks here the last few possessions. But hasn't been able to get either to fall. As Rowe checks out, Abby Lieb. Checks back in for the Lady Warriors. The Bruins continuing to stretch their advantage. 61 to 12 as we tick under three, or check that, four minutes to go in the quarter. Three ball, no good off the hands of Hackett. She was looking for her first points, and a jump ball is going to be called for, and it's going to point the way of Appalachian. Good effort there on the rebound by Angle to cause that tie-up. Flip the possession arrow. Appalachian gets it this time. The Bruins are back into that 3-2 zone look. Kessler at the head of it. Cox still has her dribble, 30 feet from the basket. Throws it through the hands of Peterson into the Warriors bench. And another turnover. Here for Appalachian, and a full timeout is going to be taken by Caleb Money with 3.26 to go here in this third quarter, and we will take it with them. 61 to 12, Piedmont leading Appalachian here on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live.
Bruin basketball coming out of the timeout. Piedmont leading Appalachian Bible College 61-12, to 320 to go third quarter. Aaron Brook along with you. There's Amaya Scott weaving her way through the defense. Kicks out Kessler open for three. Down and out and then back down. Zaniah Kessler rattles home the three. Her second of the ball game. She's got 18. She leapfrogs her way into the scoring lead here in this contest. Under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Peterson fires up a three. That one looked good out of her hand. Offensive rebound out to Cruson. Back to Peterson. She'll fire it up again. Buries that one. First three of the season for Appalachian. And they've got 15 points on the night. 64, 15, two and a half to go in this third quarter. Scott around a screen into the corner of the lane. They dump it inside. It's nicely played on the backside by Cruson defensively. One of the best jobs we've seen from them all night. Season high for the Bruins in points coming into tonight with 67. They get a steal there. Check that, 68 as they look for more. Nice look to Kessler, lays it in with the left hand. Great feed from Scott, great finish there by Kessler, and it's 66 to 15 with under two minutes to go in the third. And a travel call against Appalachian. They turn it over yet again. As we were saying, 68 points in the opener against Warren Wilson. That is the season high for Piedmont on the season. They had 67 in their last one, looking to eclipse their season high here in the third quarter of this ball game. Three ball, Kessler down and out. Kessler's got 20 points. And nearly got her third three of the ball game there. Minute 20 to go, third quarter. 66-15, pass tipped and it's stolen away. Cumberbatch has it, gives it to Lane. Bruins looking for more here with a minute 10 to go. Their leads at 51. His angle gets it to Lane, gets it right back. Goes to the baseline, kicks out Kessler. Open for three. No good. Lane there for the offensive rebound and the putback. Her first two of the second half. She's got 18, and it's 68 to 15. 45 seconds to go third quarter. So they've now matched their season high in points. 35 seconds to go in the third quarter. Peterson looking for another three off the mark. Rebound pulled down. Lead ahead. Scott two on one all by herself lays it in. Maya Scott's got nine. The Bruins have 70 and a season high in points. 15 seconds to go in the quarter. Pass knocked away momentarily. Appalachian gets it back. Nine to shoot. Seven to shoot. Crescent on the wing. Gets to the top. Three ball. Left it short. And Abby Lieb couldn't get that three to go with .3 seconds. Not enough time for the Bruins to do anything with it on the inbound, they'll throw it ahead. Scott catches, didn't have time for the dribble. She'll teave at the horn. Wouldn't have counted even if it had gone, but we head to the final 10 minutes with the Bruins in complete control. 70 to 15, Piedmont leading Appalachian Bible College here on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win, and the others do.
final 10 minutes go up on the clock and the Bruins 10 minutes away from snapping their three game losing streak picking up their third win of the season and right now as we begin play here in the fourth quarter they have a season high in points they lead Appalachian Bible College 70 to 15 looking for more right off the break there Angle buries the three her first of the night she's got five and it's 73 to 15. Aaron Brunk along with you as Appalachian has it into the front court they dump it inside Crusoe makes a nice catch with the right hand and her floater won't go down but a foul call is going to go against Angle that'll be the first foul on the Bruins here in the quarter just 28 seconds in and for Angle that's her first foul Lane getting a break over on the bench as Cruson knocks home the free throw. She's made three free throws on the night, two field goals. And she increases her point total with that one. She's got eight points on the night. And it's 73 to 17. It was a slow start for Appalachian. Didn't get a field goal. Until the second quarter is that one right through the hands of Kessler and into the second row of seats. But Appalachian still trying to figure things out offensively. They've turned the ball over at least 20 times in this ball game. Don't have an exact count, but certainly the turnover margin heavily skewed as Cruson wide open in the paint, knocks that one down. That might have been the best offensive set. ABC's run all night, 73 to 19. 55 seconds played here in the fourth quarter. Scott had it go through her hands, right back though to Rumpf, cross court to Kessler, three ball, couldn't bank it home, outlet it to Peterson. Here comes the Lady Warriors, but it's swatted away by Rump. She'll lead the breakout and she'll slow it down just across the timer. Got it across the timeline, let everybody else join her. They reset the offense. Angle, cross court to Kessler. Right back to Angle. To Scott, she'll drive, pull up, inside the paint. No good, offensive rebound, put back up and good from Cumberbatch. She's got 12 and it's 75 to 19. Bruins inching their way towards triple digits. 8-10 8-10 to go. Might not be enough time for him to get there. We'll see. Taylor drives the baseline. Swatted away by Angle, but I believe they're going to call Angle for the foul. Good drive by Taylor and a good job by Angle to come over from the weak side to help out. Thought she might have gotten that one cleanly. They say she got some arm. Sends Taylor to the line. All three of her points tonight have come at the free throw line. She back irons that one, though. Appalachian trying to make it to 20 here with this free throw. They do indeed. Taylor gets her fourth point of the night. With eight minutes to go, it's 75 to 20. Scott running the point. Looking for Kessler at the top of the key. She comes to get it. 15 on the shot clock. It's Kessler. Bounces it around the zone. They cross court, pass it to Angle. She'll fire up a three. No good. Rumpf gets the rebound off the carom. Put back, no good. Rebound comes to Angle. She goes too hard off the glass. And Cruson yanks down the rebound for the Lady Warriors. Bruins all over the offensive glass tonight. Not able to put that one home, though. 7.20 to go, and the pass tipped away into the backcourt, but Taylor able to come away with it. No backcourt violation as it was touched last by Kessler. As Taylor splits the defense, ball on the floor, tied up, and the arrow points the way of the Bruins. With that, Kessler will check out. Ashley Lane comes back on. 
check that. They hadn't flipped the arrow since the end of the quarter, so it stays with Appalachian as Peterson fires the three right off the inbound. Can't get it to go. The outlet's stolen away, though, by Lieb. Lieb gives Taylor, and Taylor's pass stolen away. Lead ahead. Scott picks it up, lays it in with the right hand. It's nice when you can just leave a pass hanging out in the middle of the floor and know that Amaya Scott's going to go get it. Her speed gets the layup, gives her two more, puts her into double figures. She's got 11, and it's 77 to 20. Six and a half minutes to play. And a foul on the reach in by Rump. Out near midcourt, that's going to be her fourth. That is going to be the fourth. Check that, the third here in this quarter against Piedmont. So nearing one and one opportunity here for Appalachian. Six and a half to play. As Peterson dribbles, had it stolen away by Rump. She'll try the lead pass ahead, just overshot Lane on the break. Caleb Money, not a fan of the long baseball pass ahead, especially when Piedmont's got a 57-point advantage and they're just trying to run out the last six minutes and change. Coach Money and his crew going to pick up their third win of the season. They're going to go to three and five as Scott nearly got another steal to flex that one into the seats. Ball stay with Appalachian. But a nice turnaround for this Piedmont program. Came in without a win a couple of years in this season. This year, they picked up three, and we've still got plenty of basketball left here this year. Three-game road swing coming up for the Bruins, but they'll go into it with some momentum as that Long two taken by Rump, no good. Rebound pulled down by Appalachian. At Florida College on Friday, then Saturday they play at Trinity Baptist College in Jacksonville. So two this weekend before coming home 1st of February for a game at Johnson and Wales. Their next home game is that ball off the fingertips of LaValle. Another turnover by Appalachian. The next home game will be on February 15th. Still a couple of weeks away as Johnson and Wales makes the trip in to Winston-Salem. Approaching the midway mark of this fourth quarter, Aaron Brunk along with you. Piedmont International with a 77 to 20 lead. Scott looking to add to it. Her three ball online just left it short. And it'll flip over to ABC. Driving the baseline, Taylor trying to float it inside, taken away again by Scott. Here she goes, trying to beat the defense. Nice look to Lane, floats it up with the right hand, hangs on the iron and goes. And Ashley Taylor, check that Ashley Lane. With her 20th point of the night, that's a season high for her. And get it inside, nice cut, and a nice lay-in by Kiki Peterson. She's got six on the night, and it's 79-22. to 22. Pass nearly stolen away, and off the pan, though, of Lane after the deflection, and it is going to be a turnover by Piedmont. 79-22, four minutes to go. They try that backdoor look again, and it's taken away this time. Scott racing ahead of the defense, layup too short. Rebound pulled down by Kessler, and she's hit on the putback attempt. She'll go to the line for a pair. Foul will go against Phoebe Taylor. Her second, first on Appalachian here in the fourth. Kessler to put the Bruins in the 80s. 
She does just that with that free throw. And that's her 21st point of the night. She was coming off 16 points against Bob Jones two weeks ago, and that one back iron no good, but Lane sneaks in, gets the rebound, the floater, and one coming. And right now it's a race between Lane and Kessler for our player of the game. Lane seesaws her way back in front of that competition with her 22nd point of the night after that offensive rebound. 82-22, a 60-point advantage for the Bruins. South Falls free throw is good. And the three-point play is complete. And a timeout going to be called by Amy Stiles over there on the Appalachian bench. And it's going to be a full timeout that we will take with her. 83-22, 3.50 to go here in Winston-Salem on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Appalachian basketball coming out of the timeout. All Bruins here as we close out this contest. Piedmont with another steal, and it's Scott again ahead of the pack, laying it in for two more. Amaya Scott with another steal and layup. She's got 13 points, and it's 85-22, three and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Lieb bounces it to the corner to Taylor. Taylor. Trying the interior pass, stolen away by Kessler. And no hurry here for the Bruins as we tick towards three minutes to go. Wondered if they would try and hit the century mark, but right now they seem like they're just content to run their 30 seconds of offense and get out of here with their third one of the season. Kessler crosses over into the paint, hit on her way up, put back attempt no good. Bodies all over the floor as Cumberbatch got the offensive rebound and stepped on Kessler. On the putback try. Couldn't get enough on it. She takes a spill and now she'll take a seat. Right now, Caleb Money already with that short bench. We told you a couple of folks sick tonight. Sophie Barnes and Braden Carpenter both out with illnesses. So short bench as it is, can't afford injury. As that three-point shot, no good, way too short from Kiki Peterson. The rebound to the Bruins. So again, we mentioned the two games on the road in Florida this weekend for the Bruins. Want to try and be healthy when they make that road trip. Because if you go down there with seven, two games in two days, it's going to be a tough road. Shot off the mark. Rebound controlled by Appalachian, but they turn it right back over, and now... If the Bruins want to hold for the entirety of the shot clock, they can take the game clock under two minutes. Kessler cross-court pass to Rump. They feed it inside Scott. Nice handles, keeping it away from the defense, lays it in with the right hand. Four straight for Ramiah Scott. And it's 87-22 as we tick under two minutes to play in the contest. Appalachian Bible College playing their first game. Official game in five years. Nice entry pass to Krusen. That was a great feed right through the hands of the defense. And Krusen has 12 points. 87-24. Certainly not the outcome they were hoping for, but some positives they can take out of here and certainly some things they can work on as a team as they get a steal there on the cross-court pass attempt. It's taken away by Taylor. 
Taylor weaves her way through the defense, and a 30-second timeout is going to be called to allow Coach Amy Stiles to get a substitute in here. Samantha White, junior guard out of Mount Vernon, Ohio, will check in for the first time here for the final 83 seconds. And again, Apple Appalachian has played well in spurts and shown some flashes of some things they can do well, both offensively and defensively, but biggest challenge for them is they seem to have the set offense that they want to run, and that's getting the ball inside and kicking it back out. And really, the Bruins have read every entry pass tonight and forced quite a few turnovers in this ball game, upwards of 20, maybe approaching 30 in this ball game. We don't have an official stat on that. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll get those tonight when they go up online. But the amount of steals that the Bruins have come away with here tonight is nothing if not impressive. As the entry pass to Cruson, another two-pointer up for her. and She's having herself a nice night. 14 points. She's got 14. Of Appalachians, 26. 87 to 26 to score. Rump in the corner to the head of the key. Scott, drive and kick. Lane fires a three. Heel of the iron, Rump battling for the offensive board. Rowe saves it and knocks it off of, no, it did not hit Rump. I thought Rowe was able to save it, knock it off of Rump, but it'll stay with the Bruins. Uh, Scott checks out, that'll be it for her night. Angle comes back on. And with 49 seconds to play, Bruins can hold. They won't. (laughs) There's a shot off the inbound by Angle. Offensive board, Cumberbatch back up. No good. Another offensive board. Rump has it. Bounces it out. Ten seconds separating shot clock and game clock. Rump in the corner to Kessler. Top of the key. Around this side. Angle crosses it over to Rump. She drives. Left the layup short. Rebound yanked down. Krusen with 20 seconds on the game clock. The shot clock has gone dark. Appalachian throws one up. Peterson no good. Rebound Rump had it knocked away momentarily. Got it back. 8-7, 6-5 into the front court. They'll hand it off to Lane, and she will dribble out the final two seconds. And the Bruins snap their three-game losing skid, pick up a big one here tonight, 87-26 as Piedmont International rolls. Over Appalachian, 87 to 26. Quite a performance here tonight from the Bruins. We'll have a chance to talk with Caleb Money after his team's 61 point victory and chance to talk about the turnovers that they forced here tonight and the play of Ashley Lane, who had 23 points, Zaniah Kessler finishing with 21 points, Arian Rump. 11 points in the contest. Alicia Cumberbatch with 12 points. And Amaya Scott, who sat out the first 10 minutes of this game, still finishing with 15 points in the contest. We'll see if we can get a word with Ashley Lane, our player of the game, coming up here in the postgame show. She had 16 in the first half, just seven in the second half, but really didn't need them all. 87 to 26, the final score is again the Bruins pick up their third win of the season, improving to 3-5 and five on the year for Appalachian Bible College. They drop their first contest, official contest they played in five years. They fall to officially 0-1 on the year. A lot of things for this Appalachian squad to build on, but certainly a lot of things for them to work on as well. As we'll go ahead and take a quick break. We'll let Coach... Money get all set up, and then we'll come back and chat with him here in the postgame. Again, the final score, 87-26. Come back, we'll chat with the head coach here on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live. Yeah, yeah. Low, low, low. Yeah. 360 in the contract. Never that. I just take the contact. I bring it back. I'm running on the fast break behind the back. Yeah, this that, this that, this that penny with yeah, the shack. If he's passing me the rock, you might not get it back. They never gave a hand, now they want to give me that. I don't know where you've been. I got fear of God. Ain't no fear of man. At least them air mini Yeesh, need a pair of them. Ooh, LA, 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 man, I feel like magic. Yeah, 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 I can't stand the traffic. West side for the vacation. Yeah, West Westbrook yeah, on the isolation. Yeah. So New York City gotta keep it, me keep man, no, uh. The bubble jacket with the pimpy wrinkle camel, uh. From Argentina, it's a military. 
Welcome back. Going into our post-game show after the Bruins roll over Appalachian Bible College tonight, 87-26. to Joined now by head coach Caleb Money and coach 16-0 right out of the gate. Had to feel pretty good to start. It did. Uh, it was the... It was the main one-two punch, if I can say, because that was kind of our motivation coming out of the locker room was to deliver the TKO. We haven't been able to do it. We've delivered some jabs to start some games, and then we've fallen off, and we haven't been able to put them to the mat. And that's kind of what we wanted to do early tonight. I want to talk about the defense. I don't know what the final tally is on turnovers tonight, but you all controlled everything in the paint. Every time they tried to get an interior pass, you guys just took it away. So we tried. I knew they had some size, and I knew they've been. That's their emphasis. That's trying to who they're built around. Uh, it's their first game this uh, this season in a rebuild year for them, uh, and I knew that's what they wanted to emphasize. And so yes, we did want to have active hands. And there's no telling. Everybody listening to the game could probably hear me say that every defensive possession was just screaming active hands, and it's just kind of been an emphasis we're trying to put on it. So how good does that feel, and what does that do for you guys now? You go on the road this weekend for a couple. What kind of momentum does that give you guys taking off here? I hope it gives us a lot. We'll see. We'll know a lot more tomorrow and Wednesday in practice. Uh, but what I was really stressing from halftime on was building our habits. Our habits can either become really good or really bad from a game like this. And we really wanted to stress that we can have good habits after a game like this. We had some moments, some dumb, silly turnovers, and it's difficult. We have you know six true freshmen on the team, uh, and we're tired playing with a few sick tonight that couldn't be couldn't dress out for us. So. You know, it was difficult for him to stay focused, but building the correct habits and the habits that will help us in the closer games in the end of the year, that's what we were trying to stress. We're going to talk to Ashley here in just a minute, but I want to talk about her play. She had 16 in the first half. She didn't, didn't have the big second half that she had in the first, but just talk about what her play means to you guys, especially from the point controlling that offense. Ashley, as a true freshman, has been phenomenal on the court and off the court for us. I can't ask any more from her. Uh, but what she did in the second half was really – keep keep the chatter up keep the defensive mentality up uh and she was and that that becomes becomes very contagious for everyone else and she really wasn't the only one but she does she is kind of the catapult a lot of times of of tossing everyone into the mix of things well coach congratulations on the win tonight good luck on the road this weekend thank you very much i hope i can go i'm i'm worried about missing the birth of my son who's due oh. in just a couple of weeks well so, congratulations thank you I, ho I hope i can make it <laughs> well either way congratulations to you and great win tonight i appreciate it that's head coach Caleb Money. We'll let him go ahead and make the headset exchange. We'll get a chat here with Ashley Lane in just a moment as we take a look at some of the final numbers. Ashley Lane leads all scores tonight. She finishes with 23 points in the contest, followed closely by Zaniah Kessler. Kessler finishing with 21 points on the night for the Bruins. Alicia Cumberbatch finishing with 12 points. Arian Rump with 11 points tonight for Piedmont International and Amaya Scott with 15, but we're joined now by our player of the game, Ashley Lane. And Ashley, you got me? Yeah, I got you, sir. <laughs> Congratulations on the win. And I asked Coach, jumping right out of the gate, you guys got a 16 0 lead. What does that do for the confidence when you jump out to a lead like that? Oh, the confidence is there. Everybody kind of played their game, played their role tonight, and everybody was actually like really playing as a team. And we were passing the ball really good. We got out to a good start with a bunch of steals. I know like Maya had probably eight in the whole game. She was great. And when we get steals, we converted the turnovers, and that was good for us. Yeah, I was asking Coach about this. Nothing got inside, it felt like, there for a couple of minutes in the second quarter. You guys seemed to take everything away. Is that something you guys took pride in tonight is forcing those turnovers and getting out on the break? Yeah. Um, at halftime, Coach was really excited that we had every, like, all the turnovers were forced by us, except for I think he said two. And – He's really harping on our defense right now to get us ready for our Florida tournament. And, and I think we leave on Thursday. And we're just trying to go down there and do what we do. And I asked him about that, too, that big Florida trip coming up for you guys. Had a couple out tonight with illnesses and stuff. But what kind of momentum and confidence does that give you all as a team getting ready to go off for that tournament this weekend? To me, it just feels great. Um, I feel like all of us contributed, even though we were trying to pick up the slack from people that we couldn't really have it tonight. We're just praying for everybody to heal up. So when we go down there, everybody's going to be doing their best and having a good time. And the last thing I wanted to ask you is just, you had 23 points tonight. You led all scores, but talk about the contribution you guys got all the way down the list. You guys had five and double figures tonight. Oh, yeah. Um, whenever we started getting the runs, Coach was just preaching that we should stay with our game, make sure that everybody's contributing, don't, not try to be greedy or anything like that. Just keep with us and – Everybody across the board is doing great. I'm pretty, everybody had a steal tonight. Everybody was having, like like you said, double-digit points. It was just great. It was an overall good team win. 
it was a fantastic win. Congratulations to you. Good luck in Florida this weekend. Thank you so much. And so, um, that's where my hometown is, so I just want to say thanks to my mom and everything to coming out. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Ashley. Ashley finishing with a game-high 23 points tonight to lead all scores as the Bruins roll blowing out Appalachian Bible College tonight by a score of 87 to 26, improving to three and five on the air, snapping that three game losing skid. And they will again take off this weekend, heading down to Florida, as you heard both coach and Ashley say, they will take on Florida College on Friday, that game at 5.30 down in Temple Terrace, Florida. And then they'll head over to Jacksonville to take on Trinity Baptist College, that game will be Saturday at 2 o'clock. Then they'll make their way back up to North Carolina where they will take on Johnson and Wales. That game next Thursday, February 1st at 5.30. They'll finally return home for a game against Johnson and Wales on Thursday, February 15th. That'll do it for us tonight. Again, your final score, Piedmont International University rolling over Appalachian Bible College 87 to 26 for our entire crew here in Winston-Salem. I'm Aaron Brunk thanking you for joining us tonight here on the Bruins Sports Network from Carolina Sports Live.